I don't know why I had three nine sixteenths and I uh, can't find a half inch to save my That's life. That's the way it always is. <laughs> Happens to me that way all the time. The hard part's going to be getting the, the wrench back in the back and getting those loose without a socket. And I found the rest of the harness, you know, that I, when I had to put the three in one on that um that belongs to it. So you, you did what? I found the rest of the harness, you know, the uh for the oh. electronics. Okay, all right. Yeah. There's another little Yeah with the connectors. Harness. Yeah. All right. No hurry here, so just relax. You don't Thank have you. to. You don't have to rush. Have you talked to my wife? <laughs> <laughs> Everything go okay Thursday? Oh, the doctor? Yeah. Well, if you call. Him telling me that all my passages in my heart are plugged up and that I need bypass surgery, I guess it's okay. Well, that doesn't sound very really good. Are they scheduling one? Are they thinking about it? Pardon? Are they thinking, uh, are you going to have to go in? I got to see him Wednesday to decide what he's going to do. Gotcha. Yeah. Good luck. Yeah, thanks. I started to turn the bolt out of the bottom, so I need to. Lock down the. Okay. Oh. All right, like this. You said. Um, yeah, the ones in back are going to be hard to do with a ratchet. Or with so the, you said use the socket, right? Yeah, you're going to have to find a half inch socket. Cause yeah. it's, I got a little bitty one here, so hopefully that'll help me. Oh, it's metric, so. Uh, 13 millimeter. Yep. Well, I'm, I'm going for my real ratchet. It'd be right now, my real socket, sorry. Uh, no problem. Find it? Yep. Just, uh, I ended up digging out, but spending all kinds of time digging out of the truck trying to find a half inch all the time. <laughs> Two all I need, I can't find. Yeah, I guess I should be thinking, uh, I'm just running downstairs every time. You, you had to go out of the truck, maybe even take your socks and shoes, or whatever. Oh, it's, and it's hot sometimes in the back of the truck, and you just like can't find yeah. it. Where is my. Don't have enough light. <laughs> Yeah, it's crazy. All right, so I'm working on the back left now. If I can okay. get it in, please. Is 
sometimes when I put it back together, I don't even put those back ones in. Yeah, I hear you. It's not going anywhere. With two in the front, it's not going anywhere. Yeah, and so this one also was uh, walking out of the the bottom. Yeah. Gotta... Yeah, and it's hard to get both hands back there. Yeah, in fact, I've got a small crescent that I'm just wedging in there. <laughs> yeah, I guess my heart got damaged too many times from girls breaking my heart in the past, so they got to fix it now. <laughs> you know, cost you back then, cost you now. Crazy. All right, I think I got one. Usually, the washer. usually when they break loose, then uh, you can usually twist them off by hand, but not always. Yeah, just, Sometimes no, the got, threads yeah. tight all the way off. No, finger tight on the, the first three. That's good. Sometimes it's like are you kidding me all the way off it's like <laughs> you know some of them have these uh metal uh protecting you know spacers i guess the sleeve yeah that sleeve just keeps you from tightening it down too far right which i imagine people are wanting to do yeah it's just it, you're just flattening out the rubber too much if you don't put the sleeve in there Fishing out washers, bear with me. No, that's fine. I found I, no hurry on my part, so don't don't yeah. don't feel that way at all when we're doing this. Much appreciated. I'm, yeah, no, I'm I, I say it out loud too because it's I know I'm always trying to hurry because I think somebody's like, you know, they want me to hurry up and it's that's not the case here at all. Well, I appreciate it. So yeah, this is the the trickiest one probably. Now Yeah, because the other compressors in your way. And the line, the, the, yeah. the tubing is in your way, too. Sometimes I have to use a longer extension and, and go up higher than the tubes to, to actually loosen it with the socket. You know, that's what I was just thinking. So yeah, I, I, I can't I get in there. Don't know if I have the six-inch, but right now. That's fine. So how many tools will I leave in here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hopefully none. Yeah, right? Yeah. That was a great call on the extension. Yeah, it's just the easiest way to get You're not going to get it out the other way. Those tubes are in your way, and you can't get your hand in there. That's why that and then the soldering is why it's so much easier to have the top off. No, I got it. I end up fighting with it. I do it this way quite often because I just don't want to mess with the pulling it out. And inevitably, the customer is going to go, well, "That scratch wasn't on my floor before." And as I take pictures before because they sometimes they just want a new floor. Right. I guess all the years of this thing beating around has. Uh, it's funny, three out of the four bolts that go into the cabinet have loosened. Yeah. You know, so you just have to anchor the bottom there. Yep. If, I, if I'm breathing heavy, it's not because I'm trying to go fast. It's because I'm so out of shape. <laughs> That's fine.
We're right back. All right, I'm back. Yeah, I'm still. That's fine. With it. I figure that's going to be the hardest one right there. Always is. I'm just having a trouble getting a bite on the bottom one. We're going to do some percussive maintenance in a minute. the legs on the other compressor or put it in a vise and work my way around. Okay. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this one's not going back on, Mike. <laughs> no, no reason for it. Yeah, three out of four. I mean, two out of four. But no. yeah, it's not going know. anywhere. Okay, just let me square away a couple of pieces here. All right, step one complete. Uh, what are you thinking? Vacuum time or yeah. you know, vacuum it in place or? Go ahead and put, um, take the uh, cap off the valve in the front there. And then put the gauge, the yellow gauge uh, hose, the left one, on there. I don't know. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? Or yeah, I don't know if I've, given, if I've given you a decent view. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. All right. So that's good. Nothing blew up. I'm seeing cheerleaders. That's well, that's, that's on your end. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I just have the yellow gauge finger tight. My valves are closed on the manifold. Yep. And I'm going to connect. Just go ahead and screw it on there.
Okay, it went up to, is that PSI on the outside or? Yeah, yeah. 80 PSI. Yeah, it's just full of frame. Or, uh, yeah, one, what, 434, would you say you saw 414? Right. All right, so this is where I'm going to evacuate it by putting my blue line in a bucket with some towels over it and opening the windows and the fan's already running. Okay. Right, so this is the rest of my setup. Those fans are sucking. Okay. And uh, we'll bring in fresh air here. And it's um, my bucket. So this is what I was thinking. You know, with what do you think? Yeah, except I would put it outside your refrigerator so you don't fill up the chamber with Freon. Okay, I'm just uh, I'm out of space. Yeah. Yeah, you can set it on there. There you go. Just I can close. I can even close this door for now to help it. If I wet the towel, does that help? Won't matter. Yeah, okay. Can I answer this real quick? Yeah, take your time. Hello, this Mike. Yes, how you doing? Um, slow. Yeah. How are you doing? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Are you going to be around later on today? I can stop by. Okay. Yeah, it'd probably be like uh, one or two. Yeah, I'll let you know on the way. Okay. Okay. I'll see you then. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. Ready for the show? Yeah, just do it slow. Yeah. Just open it slow. you hear it? I don't hear it from this end. I do hear a little, and the gauge is dropping. Hissing? It is. Okay. Yeah, I'd rather just do this slow so it doesn't disturb that as much, right? No, I, I just like to start slow and then just open it up all the way. Yeah, you can go ahead and open it all the way down. It'll go out pretty quick. And I've got a lid to throw on that bucket as soon as it's done, so. Okay. You can see how quick it goes out. There's not much in there. It was only eight ounces. Will I get liquid at some point? No. No. The only liquid will be uh, any oil that comes out with it. There's usually a little bit, not much. That's how quick it gets rid of all of it because there's just not much in there. <clears throat> I can smell something that's not so friendly, but yeah. Yeah, it's oil. That's why I always use it. Open the windows and turn the fan on because the customer sometimes is like, "What's that smell? It's oil." Yeah, so, so <laughs> kind of a sweet ahead. smell. It's somewhat of a sweet smell. It's strange, strange odor. My dad was a tool and die maker, and uh, 
I swear, I, I'm probably the only person that likes the smell of cutting oil because, you know, he was coming home from work. <laughs> it's like a sweet. It's like a sweet smell. It's strange. All right, so we're zero. Yeah, just grab a hold of the top of the compressor and just shake it back and forth. Uh, Got it. And and you're just disturbing the freon that's caught up in the oil, trapped in the oil. You'll, that's why we broke the bolts before. Yeah, and then you'll hear you'll hear some more you'll hear some freon come out as you do that. Oh yeah, I can jump back up. No. No, I didn't. Well, I didn't see it. No, it won't go up much. You just you'll hear it come out though. You're, you're just trying to get it to come out of solution. Yeah, it's just stuck in the oil and inside the compressor. It's usually not much, but I just do it for a little bit, and then when it, you don't hear anymore, it's pretty much done. Now, if I'm making all this noise, my wife knows she's gonna have to pay me more. <laughs> this is really hard, honey. <laughs> yeah. There we go. <coughs> Did I jump more? Yeah, you can shake it violently if you want. All right. Yeah, you're not going to hurt it. It's as hard as you can shake it. Just try to get all the Freon out of there as you can. Yeah, I, I felt it turn over. Or a swing free, anyway. Yeah. That's probably good enough. Um, and then at this point, um, go ahead and take that a blue hose and then hook it up to your vacuum pump. And we'll suck anything that's in there out of there. Yeah, so give me a second. Yep. Brand new vacuum pump, right? Yep. So I'll connect the blue hose. Am I going right. to um, – can I put the red hose on the discharge into the bucket just for the short term? No, you don't need to. No, you don't need to worry about that because it's going to go by the blue hose anyways to get to the red. So it's really futile to mess with the no, red. I'm, I'm suggesting whatever spits out of this, I want to capture, or just put a towel over it or something. Oh yeah, just put a towel over it, like this. Yep, exactly. All right. Yeah, so the, vent, gonna... the vent is that blue cap there in front. That's the vent. Remove. Um, exhaust cap before operating. So, right? I follow directions. Every one of them is different. Yep. Okay. So this one says remove exhaust cap. So th this must be the exhaust. Yeah, that's the cap you have in your hand. So you don't. Yeah, that's the exhaust. And then, so that's where I want my towel. Right. Okay. And are there two vacuum ports, or just are they different? Yeah, they're two different sizes. The top one usually is the right size for the hose. Gotcha. The other one's a half inch. That's three eighths. All right. So I'm going to take the blue hose out of the bucket. <laughs> right. Just put it up on the top one. Close the bucket. Maybe not. Maybe the side one. Yeah, I, 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 I didn't really see them. Uh, yeah. Usually, usually it's the top one. Maybe that one's different. One of them's the right size, one of them's too big. <laughs> I think I found the too big one. Yeah, it's the side. It's the side one? Yeah, I'll recap yeah, so, the top. Yeah, yeah, cap the top one and then use the side. That's strange. If I, I've always had one that had it on top. It's a Zenny one stage. Let's see. Yeah, just about any vacuum pump's going to work just fine. These are small systems, so you don't have to worry about 4 CFM or anything. Yeah, I remember you telling me that. So. Yeah, it's, they're just small systems, so it's not... These things go up to four hundred plus dollars for these. You know, they get up and see if some, but you don't need it. Ah. 
I don't know if you can hear me, but you're okay. You're okay. Sorry. I'm just getting a couple of things out of the way here. Uh, that's all right. It's, I, I, thought the, I thought the video froze. I think it did. I accidentally turned off Wi Fi, but I'm glad oh. I didn't lose you. Oh. All right. So let's get back at it here. And I'm sorry, I, this is a new phone to me, so I'm still trying to learn how to okay. switch back and forth between everything. So here's Zoom. There we go. All right. So is this the big, uh, is the compressor a big uh, draw and power? <laughs> no. No, yeah, it's all right. You shouldn't have a breaker. So I haven't done anything with the oil. Is this? Oh, yeah. You got to have oil in there. Um, does it say it's yep. to the line? I'm sorry. It, it, there's an indicator on the front there, that the line that it needs to be up to. Okay, I see the min max, and it's below the min. Yeah, you got to fill it to the so min. This, this shipped with it. Right. So that's what I should use, right? Yep. And I presume it goes in here. Right. Well, that was yeah, pour it slow. Pour it slow because it, it will fill other chambers. And um, and then it can end up too high. It's not critical that it be exactly on the nine, but you know, don't try to fill it too high. And I fill it just above the min, about maybe halfway between minimum and maximum. Understood. But just pour it in slow because it'll re-level like a second or two after you pour it in. I'm going to take the uh, foil off. Yep. You know, without leaving a bunch of crazy edges so it pours better. Sometimes you don't get everything you want. Yeah. the hell with it <laughs> yeah you pour it slow anyway so that hole's big well if they make the pump as well as they make the foil <laughs> it's like it's like playing golf i don't understand why it's so difficult the hole is much bigger than the golf ball <laughs> these guys have a hard time getting it in the hole i don't understand it <laughs> i gotta open the Sorry about the noise. This is one of them 1988 kitchens with a trash compactor. Yeah. All right. I got myself some oil now. I'm going to turn the machine so I can pour better. What's up with this thing not tracking me? Watch the front there now. Still not registered anything, or just the same little yeah. line. Go ahead, and, go ahead and pour it in. I just watch the front as you're doing it. Gotcha. You make sure you don't get it too full. All right. You have to tip it over and pour some of it out. There has to be room for expansion of the freon that you're gonna that's gonna go through there. That's why it can't be all the way full. Okay. So far, I've put about a. What is this? Uh, they put very little in them just to ship them so they don't rust. So you're probably going to put quite a bit in there. I just put two ounces in. It takes okay. quite a bit. Yep. I just didn't know how quickly it settled or not. 
Uh, in a second, you'll see it start moving when you're watching it. Still not moving. Yeah, it's a big chamber. I've used half the bottle. Yeah, I, if I remember correctly, they give you just a little bit more than you need, so you take most of it. Okay. I'm just going to kind of move it around a little. Yeah, it looks like the window's starting to I'll let it level. All right, I'm right at the men now, but it's a legitimate, you know, meniscus yeah. or whatever. So yeah. I'll go that halfway. Yeah, go a little higher. About halfway between minimum and max. So it's like you can see, it's going to take most of the oil. Right. Yeah, I think. Unless something's about to blow up, I try to clean as I go. That's fine. So, uh, I'll show you the level reading here. I think we're... Yeah, that's good. That's good, yeah. I usually go about halfway. Okay. So, put the cap back on. This is like a car motor. You don't want to run it low on oil. Right. <clears throat> so caps on. Yeah, I've never seen the vent that you took the cap off on. Is there like a? That's not all the way open there. That that vent is it? No, there's a, uh, looks like some type of diaphragm. Uh, yeah. Okay, good. You see that? And that's about, yeah. A restrictor okay. or something, yeah. Yeah, they just uh, redesigned it because I've never seen it where you take the cap off the top. But they put a valve inside there. Yeah, there's an O-ring. So it must be a one-way valve, is that? Yep. So on the downstroke, it doesn't suck in? Yeah. Or something. And is this one of those? Uh, oh, there's the on switch. I don't know if I have it on or not. All right, I'm finger tied here. Now, this is right now, this is open. Yeah, that's fine. Just, um, uh, I always double check exactly. So just make sure those are tight. That one wasn't. <laughs> so. Yeah, I always double check those constantly when I'm working. Because the last thing you want is when you're do an evacuation or whatever that they're loose and you're like, why is it leaking? So I'm like constantly checking those. All right. So we're open here. We're closed here. Yeah, and you could you can turn it on now, the vacuum pump. I'm gonna plug it in. All right, going for on. And hopefully the whole neighborhood's like uh, power doesn't go out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's Tim Taylor, tool man. That's right. Where's his assistant? <laughs> Funny, I don't even hear that thing running. It's hard to hear background noises on this. You hear it now? No. Yeah. No, it's hard to hear certain noises. Like when it was evacuated, I didn't hear that noise either. <laughs> and then the uh, hose on the vacuum pumps tight I'll keep saying it because it's just like habit to me to keep checking fittings I had some uh, hose loose and, and driving me nuts for many many times and it's like I, now I just constantly checking them it's frustrating when it looks like you have a leak. Okay, so you don't really, uh, well, what we're going to do here is we're going to 
keep it in a vacuum and we're gonna and then we're gonna shut off and make sure that there's no leaks right um just to do that up front this is a part that a lot of technicians don't do they they don't check and make sure there's no leaks in the system before they start messing with it and then when that goes up to zero when it's shut off it, it, there's a leak somewhere of course So you're down to pretty much a perfect vacuum. Um, you leave it on for a couple more, about another minute or so. Um, and then it'll turn off the, the handle here first, right? Right, right. You want to isolate it, because that's going to just keep the yellow hose open to the system, and it closes it to the blue one. I've probably got a leak. Why is that? Well, I don't know. Maybe, Maybe it's... Is there something maybe coming out of oil still? Or, I don't know. I just thought the uh, I thought that was reading better than. Uh, tap on the, just tap on the needle. It it moves sometimes. Just tap on the front of the glass. Yeah. Your finger. That you'll see that needle move when you do that. They're not perfect. Yeah. But and it's almost on it. If I go over here. <laughs> well, there's only a 28.8 anyways. Uh, there's no 30-inch vacuum. It's not possible. I didn't um, know that. Yeah. So um, it'll read like around 30. Um, that's good enough. Um, so. Hey, can I, can, I leave, can I leave it on for a second more? Yeah. Can I set the bucket outside now? Are we done? Yeah, good. Good. Yeah. So we'll go ahead and close the valve. Yeah, go ahead and shut the, yep. And then shut the, yep. And then just watch the gauge for a minute or so here and uh, bought a uh, a torch and my company loaned me the fuel oh, that's nice so i just got to uh i haven't assembled the uh the rig yet it's just real quick i can work on that for a second is that actually settling yeah too much now? Yeah, that's pretty hot. All right. Yeah. So, what, just, what would you? Just to settle things over, um, but we'll have to work with it. Well, I mean, can I can I burn just to settling? I don't know how well it's going to come out of the tip, but we'll yeah, try. I think you burn that, and you get just a tremendous amount of soot, right? Uh, I'm not sure. Well, I still have the burns of magic. <laughs> Matt, Matt gas. Yeah. Where'd you get it at? The the acetylene? No, well, the kit. Um, at my company, Praxair. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're used to selling. They're used to selling actually acetylene. The acetylene is what. Uh, cause oxy settling is 3000 degrees. 
we we use uh, 1700, 1700, which is acetylene. So we just use a single hose um, with the turbo torch tip. Yeah. So the um, I mean, I thought the burns of ma I thought the map gas got to like 2700. It's just not a fine as flame. No, it no, it doesn't get no. Really? Well, maybe maybe uh, no no because I can't. I have a um, I have to look it up. I don't know exact temperature on map, but um, it barely gets hot enough for me to be able to solder the lines. Um, it's uh, let me look here. Um, it may be the tip that has something to do with it too. Um, It is, um, I fight with the map gas, I, and that's how I use it just as a backup. I always fight when I can't get the solder to flow. All right. Yeah, and with oxygen, it's, 2925 Celsius, 5300 degrees Fahrenheit map is. So, with oxygen. Uh, acetylene has a higher flame temperature. It's 5720. So there's 400 degrees Fahrenheit difference by, um, with the uh, acetylene is higher that's where that difference is, and it's where I struggle with it just not quite being hot enough. Well, this is, you know, I usually see the little caddies where they're carrying both. Right. right. Yeah, that's the, that's the oxyacetylene caddies. The uh, acetylene guys, you just wrap the hose around the, the regulator and, and carry just a hose in the tank with the regulator and hose in the turbo to so you don't have the long hoses either like you have there right you have a it's it's not quite as long but there's yeah. the only single hose as well yeah and you got the feed in for the oxygen feed in for the acetylene and you know frankly i've never used them but i mean if i if i read it last night they suggest you purge the oxygen first and then ignite the acetylene because the um right Otherwise, you get the carbon chain hanging around there. See, now with an with the oxyacetylene torch, the cops will be coming by to see if you've done any bank robberies. There you go. Because you'd be you're capable of cutting through saves now. I know it said four inches. I was like, do I really need four inches? <laughs> it totally cheated a in a, a backyard campfire. Two weeks ago, I used the burns of attic to start the, oh, yeah. <laughs> start the fire. <laughs> that was nice. Quick. All right. So, um, we'll just have to, on. you just have to, um, be on the copper less, less time because. Pull it closer to that gauge if you can. Okay, so it's not moving at all. It's staying exactly where it was. So that's good. Yeah. So you don't have to worry about that. Now, you can actually take the um, blue line off the vacuum pump. That's long enough. It's been on there long enough. It's not leaking. And there's the system's clean because there's nothing left in there. Or well, I, can see, I can see a little oil on the O-ring or whatever. Yep. Yeah, it yeah. comes out. It comes out of the, with the freon. Right. Always gets a little wet. Oil. Nothing really there. No. No, it's it, it vacuums uh, pretty cleanly. Unless you have a lot of garbage in there, then you'll get a stain on the towel. But otherwise, it's pretty clean. So, 
Um, you sent me a, a, a text or an email about this adapter, but I also online bought this one. I think this is what I need, isn't it? Yeah, as long as that fitting right there will go on the hose. Most of those fittings that these guys are selling, they're selling the wrong fitting. Uh, with that fitting that attached to the hose to the right there sticking out. Is that the right size for the hose? I don't it's think not, it is. But if I take this off. That's the right size. It should be three eighths. No. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. No, that'll work. Um, I just was afraid that uh, so they they sell those and they don't have that extra fitting on there to go down to three eighths. So it's that other one's half inch and it just won't work on the gauge. Gotcha. They, they sell them and if guys aren't careful and they buy the wrong one, they get the one that's too big and it's like worthless. Right. Sitting at home trying to do it. So. Yeah. All right. So is this what we're calling for next? Yeah. And so, um, no, we don't want to put the Freon in yet. Okay. No. Um, oh, I, I, I'm sorry. I was thinking, do we, so I have two cans and we're going to use less than a can probably. Right. Um, uh, do we want to purge this one more time just to, no, you know, we'll do that. no, we'll do it when we put the new compressor in. It's just a waste of, we want it to be clean uh, with the new compressor in. Well, yeah, but my thought was that, you know, we're going to have the new dryer in and the new compressor in, and if there's skunk in there, I guess you're saying it'll come out in the vacuum anyway. Yeah, it's gone. It's yeah, gone. Okay. That, no, the gauge told you it's gone. It's clean. Yeah. Otherwise, that 30 would have gone up to about 26, 24. If there was anything left in that system, this would have come up from, from 30. Okay. It wouldn't be at 30 anymore. So there's no right. contaminants in there. Good. Yeah, no, it's clean. That the that vacuum back. pump sucked it all out. All right, what's the next step? Um, Fight. <laughs> so, um, so there's a vacuum on it now. Yeah, and we don't need the vacuum anymore. Um, you can actually take the hose off and then take the needle valve out. Okay. Of the valve there. Yeah, you losing the vacuum is no big because you're gonna pull the needle out anyways. Yep. Now, if there's anything in the system, anything that that vacuum, it would have sucked up in the vacuum. I, um, guess, I, it, it, I guess I just think of like if there's a a metal or something, the vacuum is not gonna. I mean, it's. Uh, no, well, the vacuum twenty eight point eight perfect vacuum will not accommodate any debris or anything. It will okay. actually absorb that vacuum. I didn't know how it. Yeah. Uh, okay. Great. Yeah, I, no, I, I haven't worked. I haven't worked with vacuum pumps. You know what I mean. So right. no, it's reactive to anything. Gotcha. All our, but not all, but we have vessels that are vacuum insulated, and every now and then we we throw a pump on one just to because yeah. we lose in the vacuum and you know to pull it. So I'll take off the Schrader valve here. Yeah, pull the needle out. <clears throat> There's one in there. There's got to be. There it is. Oh, there has to be. <laughs> I know. I mean, I just didn't see it. And... Some of them are screwed in deeper than the other ones. I think this one must have been. Okay, I hear pressure going in now. That's it's sucking the vacuum off. Yep. This is releasing the vacuum. Wasn't so. worried. I was just giving you information. Yep. Yeah. No problem. It's, it's fluorine gas. Okay. <laughs> fluorine will kill you in about three seconds. <laughs> so it's over. Fluorine, that's some bad stuff. Yeah, HF, uh, SF6 and hex, uh, what, what do the guys use at the power plants? Uh, sulfur hexafluoride. Yeah. Well, they have a fluorine spill. They got a cordon off 50, 50 miles or so. It, <laughs> Yeah, that's terrible stuff. All right. It's good for your teeth. All right, so we've done that. Okay. And then um, what's going on with the dogs? Come on. Stupid dogs. Um. All right, so now what we have to do is um, 
decide how we're going to get this uh, compressor moved. Uh, yeah. <laughs> cutting the line is not is is, is going to create. Do you have a swaging kit? I have a the, just the swaging alcohol or whatever, just a little valve. Little hey, you're muffled. You're muffled. I can't understand. Uh, I'm sorry. I have the. Uh, I have just a swaging uh, bar. Yeah, the whole bar. Okay. Uh, this is what I got earlier this week. I'm sorry. It was the uh, three sixteenths to five eighths. Yeah, it's the whole bar with all the different ones on one bar. Right. Yeah, that's fine. So you won't be able to, because um, you don't have the the holder to to hold the tubing. You won't have to be able to. So what we don't want to do is cut this um, tubing because you're going to have a hard time swaging it because you won't be able to hold it right. uh, to knock it in. Pliers won't do it. Um, so, um, so if I um, if I lift it off the post, um, I mean, can I can I break the this this junction here? Yeah, hold it back farther because I can't really see. It's sideways too. There you go. I get a little disoriented. Um, yeah, you got, that's probably what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to um, desolder that. So that's going to push uh, back towards the compressor when it desolders. Um, so what you want to do is um, you can get a wet towel so you don't damage the tubing. And if you hold it back far enough with a wet towel, then yeah. it's not going to be too hot for you to hold. As you desolder that or heat that up and then pull back on it to break the joint once it gets hot enough. And it's going to get hot really quick with this torch. So I think what we need to do first is we need to figure out what we're going to do here with the torch. So forget this for a second. Go over to the torch and we got we got to figure out. So to break it, do I want to use the burns matic just to break it? You can try it. You can try and see if it's going to get hot enough. Yeah. I mean, that just might be easier on the breaking side. Yeah, that's fine. You can try it. Okay. Is that that's a new tank there? Or? Um, I have a new one, and I have a partial. This is probably half. Okay. Then what you're going to have to do is um, you're going to have to hold the torch under almost underneath and curve it up so that you're not heating the cabinet. Yeah, and I, like I said, I got the blanket. And, the, and some wet towels, whatever we want to use. It's still better to go up. So you'll tip it over uh, on its side and then face the flame up from underneath of it. I'm just dry fitting it right now. Hold on. So uh, <laughs> you're thinking, or. I, I go right to left. Yeah. Because there's nothing over there to the left. Right, hold on just a second. You don't want the heat directing at the wires at, at all either. Yeah. yeah, so I'll take I'll take the uh, grounding yeah. wire out. Yeah, and there's but nothing over there. Like, well, uh -huh. you're gonna face straight up. So if you pull that tubing up in the back yeah. a little bit, pull it up a little bit, it'll okay, move up. It'll yeah. lift. Just have my head need that free hand. Yeah, go back farther. Oh, you mean bend it up? Yeah, bend it up. Go back I'm farther. Sure. Yeah, I, I was trying to pull it up out just of the back. Make sure you just make sure you don't kink it in the back. Right. The whole time we're moving this tubing, just make sure you're not kinking it in the back there. Because okay. it's, it's attached to that compressor and it doesn't want to give. Right. It's got a coil in it, which helps. Yeah. Right. So when you get it up a little bit more, then you should be able to get that underneath there and just point it up and you're not going to have to worry about that wire either. Yeah. So you got plenty of room now to point up. You don't have to mess with that ground wire. Okay. You don't need to I take anything apart. You don't have to. Okay. Well, I've got to take it off the motor anyway, or the compressor, but. Yeah. yeah. See, there's plenty of room there. Just go up from the right, point up, and, and there's nothing that's going to hit. That flame's going to hit. Okay. So I have my fire extinguisher behind me. You know, I, I have this heat cloth. Why wouldn't I use it? You can set it down there. That's fine. Yeah. I have a second one, but uh, 
I'll just, I think, does yeah, that help? Need, yeah, you shouldn't need the other one right now. So what I'm also going to need, you said, uh, you know, I'll need something for the, uh, to help pull the pipe off, to pull or the hose can, off. Or you can take channel locks if you want. Just don't squeeze too tight on the tube. And just yeah. hold it back farther and just kind of gently wiggle it back and forth and pull gently as it you see it get bright red. Right. Don't pull before it gets bright red. It, it, it's no, it's senseless. Let's see. I have, uh, Eventually you'll see that solder liquefy. And then you just kind of wiggle it at that point, pull back, and, and, and I would put that far enough back that you're not a heat sink. Yeah. Otherwise, it'll sink, the, and you'll be heating that thing longer than you should. So maybe that's about four inches off. Yeah, and the, and the point, let me make a point here that you can adjust, you, you can um, judge yourself. The reason I said a wet towel before is because sometimes it's hard because you have that attached behind that loop, and you yep. have it attached in front, and sometimes it's hard to push back. And you have yep. more force with a wet towel and grabbing it and, and jiggling it and then pulling back with your hand rather than I'm the, a wet towel down. Yeah, it just might it, it's easier sometimes because it's attached at the back and it doesn't want to move backwards. Right. And you sit there and fight with it and then it then you have to take the torch off and it re solders and you gotta start all over again. Not interested. Yeah. Just let me uh, clear all the space here. You just got to be smarter than the tube. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's a big order for a Saturday, you know. Yeah, I know. Here. I know. <laughs> okay. So I have one wet hand towel. Yeah, I didn't go back. You can go back quite a ways. So it's not going to get too hot for you to hold. Yeah. Um, and you yeah, just can jiggle it and pull back when it gets released mm -hmm. and it liquefies the solder. And then hold it for a second before you let go because, it, you know, like once again, it, it can go right back to its original position, tack on there, and then you got to desolder it again. But right. also it leaves extra solder at that point and it's harder to get back in. It's nice if you get a clean pull off and then it's, it's clean. And then right. just let it cool and hold it for a second and then even bend the tube away from it so it won't go back and touch the other tube. Yeah, bend it down almost as soon as I can. Yeah, or either direction, doesn't matter. Yeah, okay. So I'm gonna have to move my phone out of the way. Um, maybe not. Let me... Uh, no, you won't have heat forward. Can you live with... Oh, I've got you upside down, I'm sorry. These lines won't, the only one you're going to have a difficult time with with the oxyacetylene is going to be the capillary tube because it can melt it because it's so hot. I'm sorry, I somehow I muted you as I was trying to move the phone into position. Oh. So, is that a good enough view for you? Yeah, that's good. Yeah. All right, so. Let me grab my, where did I drop my channel locks? If you catch your phone on fire, you can get a new phone. Oh, you have a new phone. Never mind. Yeah, I already tried that. <laughs> and you're probably on the family plan anyways. So. Yeah, you know what, I, I, I hate the rental. I, you know, I, I wait for the model to be about a year old and I buy, buy that model. I, I won't I won't even buy an iPhone. I, I have a hundred dollar Android. Does yeah, I've, got a, 
I, I drive, I use my phone for about four years. So I buy a $400. Yeah. All right. So I think, you know, I've got wet towel. I've got channel locks. I've got torch. So I guess is a concern that any of this solder might run into here. No, don't worry about that. That's okay. no, not at all. Okay. So you can just heat it up and uh, pull back on it. It'll be disconnected. That simple. And are we expecting any residue or um, surprise? Well, you can get some oil, but if you do, don't pan, don't panic. Just blow it out. It's it's yes. just like anything. If you get a flame on the end of it, just blow it out. It's well, it'll, it'll blow out it, easy. And that's where the wet towel will help too, if it needed. Yeah. No, you don't need don't. I wouldn't even put that on there because you don't want the towel to get oil on it. Just blow it out. It'll blow out. It'll be a small flame. I, I hear you. Yeah. All right, so is there any other thing we should talk about before I go for it? No, that's fine. Just keep it – just point it, um, you know, not directly up, um, but to the left some, but up and to the left, um, and that way you don't get the insulation or anything. But uh, it'll it'll heat quick, and, and it'll disconnect quick. You'll see. Yeah, I'm trying to – you know, it would be nice if I had a fork or something just to push back on it. You know what? My um, – give me just a second. Are you worried about – uh, heating up your arm <laughs> well yeah I mean I'm thinking you know like the open end wrench something that yeah that'll heat up my arm what I would yeah go ahead what are you saying um, uh, I, I, um Heat rises, so uh, yeah, if you do it that way, there's a lot of wires over there to, to the right. You're just going to heat everything up. Um, yeah. I'd do it that way. And I would just keep your arm down as low as possible, the left arm, yeah. and, and point upward because heat rises, so you're not going to. Right. How long do you think when I'm on it? You want to put a glove on this? That might help. Yeah. yeah. You know what? I got to go grab it. Forgot. Right. The other thing you can do yeah. is um, if you want, if you're worried about it, I don't want to worry about it. I do it with, with no sleeves on. Um, I just keep my arm lower because I know the heat rises. You can wrap the other the other blanket over your arm. Yeah, I mean, I think I got a pretty decent glove here. This is one of my father's old welding. Yeah. Like I say, you can you can wrap that blanket over the arm too if you want. It's I think it's a little overkill, but um, better safe than sorry. Yeah, well. I'm pretty, uh, you know, I'm, I'm as good as the average bear. If my arm's hot, I'm going to move it. I'm always, I'm always burning my arm. I have to do that once a day so I know I'm working. Right. <laughs> All right. So um, we should talk about the flame for a second. Yeah, that one's going to be so, um, what it is. When it gets open, it's just what it is. The map. Yeah, I mean, I can down a little. All right. So. Yeah, that's that's it. You get what you get on those. I, I, I thought there was a little fine tuning that occurs. No, no. 
That dial will turn it on or off. So full throttle or? Yeah, because it, I, I, like I said, I have a hard time with. Or, you know, what, what's the? You know, I would go all the way because all right. it, it, all right. I have a hard time with it. Well, I mean, do we want to do the oxyacetylene or? No, go ahead and try that. It's a more. Yeah, or, yeah no, we'll, we'll try the match. Try the burns Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think it, it, taking it off uh, won't won't be a big deal. Right. Okay. So I'm going to get going. All right. Using, yeah, use the wet towel. Use the wet towel too. Yeah, I yeah. was trying to get to the wire, but uh. <laughs> Do you get too hot? Uh, a little warm. Yeah. I saw the solder start to flow. Okay. You know, since you have that, since you have that heat, that uh, mat there, just go ahead and point it at the mat. Yeah. Okay. And, and I just wet my glove a little. Yeah. Yeah, and just point it down more at the mat because you have that mat there. It it should protect everything. Okay. That way you can keep your arm arm over there. Keep the tips of the blue, the tips of the blue as close to that joint as possible, and that's the hottest point of the flame. The the inside blue, right? The tips of the, yeah, the smaller tips about a half inch away from the opening. Gotcha. The tips of that yeah, circle. Yeah. And that's the hottest point of the flame, and it'll heat it up the hottest Bag, if you're worried about that map, put two of them down. That's what I was just going for. It won't go through it. I've I've used them many times in the past, and <clears throat> just make sure you have the right side pointed down. What? I think those are bi-directional. I think you have to have the right side pointed. I can't. I didn't but... think that. I'll check. Thank you. Uh, this one says, do not use with air acetylene torches. Yeah, because uh, oh, other oxygen. oxygen. Actually, acetylene is 3,000. It'll melt it. Yeah. That's why. This it... doesn't say anything. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't say anything about bidirectional. Is one, are they both sides of the surface, they look the same? They feel the same, yeah. Okay. And they look the same. I, I can't. I can't tell from the picture. Yeah. So it doesn't matter then. It's definitely not going to go through that. It's designed for acetylene and, and MAP and whatever, but not Oxy. Oxy's too hot. Got it. Way too hot. It's a cutting torch. All right. Right. Need NASA stuff for that. Yeah. Be right back. Okay, and then...
if you're gonna if you're gonna um, do this, um, the camera's on the wrong side. Uh, yep. Can you put it on the other side so I can see the joint as you're doing it? That can help you. I, I um, over against the I don't know where I put it. The defrost timer on the right side, that white box. It. Just lean it against yeah, the defrost timer. timer. Yeah. I mean, that's the way. Oh, uh, well, yeah. So if I'm not coming in from that direction now, or if I'm coming from the top. Yeah, you won't. Yeah. You won't affect the phone. Um. So uh, it's stalled again. So I don't know if you clicked on something or. Thank you for telling me. I don't know if I did either. All I'm seeing is cheerleaders. Cheerleaders. <laughs> there better not be cheerleaders in your house. No, there are no cheerleaders here. Is that better? Yeah. I can flip it 180 degrees. If oh, I that was good. That was that was good where it was. Right. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so we will go again and. Uh, I'm going to move my light. One thing you want to be careful of, don't pull too hard on it. Don't try to force it apart. Don't do that because you'll rip the copper when it gets nice. soft. So you're just going to gently move it, and when it lets go, it, you'll see it let go. I'll wiggle and, it, right? Yeah, yeah just, just keep gently wiggling it and gently pulling back just to put slight pressure on it, but you're not pulling on it. I'm, I'm not. Okay, I got you. What yeah, if I was pull on it because you'll, yeah, okay. you'll rip the copper once it gets soft. Okay. It won't it won't separate from the solder. It'll actually rip the solder apart, break the joint. Got it. Okay, is that okay for you? Yeah. All yeah, right, so I'm going to try coming in. I'm going to come in from the top. That's fine. Just be patient with it and, to, and when you see it start to liquefy, then go back towards the compressor just slightly because you want to loosen up the back part of not just the joint in front where the joint is. You want to loosen it up inside okay. um, also. So as soon as it, saw, it starts to melt and liquefy at the joint where you can see it, then just slightly move it back towards the compressor to get inside there melted also all the way back to where the tube goes all the way in too. Okay. And once that all lets go, then boom, it's just going to pull apart. That's why you don't want to pull on it. Don't pull on it. Just gently, gently. Wiggle it back and forth. Right. And am I done with this stub? Yeah, you can, but just don't bend it and break it because you're going to reuse it. No, you, we bought, uh, you sent me five or six, oh, that's right? right. Yeah, that's right. So can I get it out of the way? Yeah, you can move it up. Or sideways. It's broken now. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah, I mean, that helps me, you know, get a, a an angle. Okay. You can move that capillary out of your way. It's not going to break it or anything. Just, just. Just push it to the left. Just a capillary. Yeah, just just bend it over to the left. I, wait, you mean over here or oh, your left? Your left. My left. I can't. I'm. I don't have any more. No, I don't know. But bend it down towards the compressor. Just bend it down towards the compressor. There you go. Okay, so come over it. I see. Yeah. yeah. Okay. As long as, yeah, that, 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 as long as you don't bend the capillary like in a 90, then it's not going to kink. You can well, bend I, mean, I, I got to tell you, this was already there, but that was kind of tight up there. That's fine. It's not kinked. Well, they always have those little. It was close, you know, but. But you okay. can still see it's round. And that's the important thing. Yep. Okay. There's so, no uh, I think this is a better lead for me now. Okay. And. I've got the torch. I'm going to move my foot footing here just a second. All right. Any idea on the amount of time? Yeah, it's going to take about 15, 20, 30 seconds for it to let go, probably. Okay. All right. Yeah, just just be patient. It'll you'll see it. You'll see it with your own eyes. Okay. That liquefy. And once it liquefies right. right at the joint, then just move it just gently back, just slightly back, and heat up the rest of that collar. Not that there. Just as far as the tube goes in. So start here and just to there. Okay. Yeah, and so you're just gently going to go move it back to that point and, and desolder all that, melt all that inside, because that's going to take a little longer to, to melt than it is on the outside. Okay. All right. And it'll I'm ready. Go. You'll see. Here we go. Go ahead. And I'm going to put that there if I need to grab it. Yeah.
Yeah, you might want to move your. Move. The, uh, sorry. Yeah, you, I, move your towel though. You don't want to catch that on fire. That I felt like that was channeling too much uh, flame back toward you. And the other yeah. stuff over here. here. So maybe I, I need a, yeah, not as much flow, but. Okay. Okay, get the, get the tip, the blue tips up there. Say again? You have to get the blue tips up there. The flame's not okay. going to be hot enough. Got it. Right there. There you go. There you go. You see that stuck? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's all right. You got it apart. You go ahead and if you want, if you're not worried about that towel, just set the towel in there and cool those blankets down. That's where the smoke comes in and the fan is uh, is helpful. It takes that smoke out. That's oil that's burning is what it is. All right. Well, okay, you get the smoke. Did I do too much damage? No, it's fine. We don't we don't know yet. <laughs> you saw you saw how much hotter it got when you got to the tips though. Yeah, the yeah. Flame. You can't do it with the flame. The flame is not hot enough. I understand. Yep. I did, you know, I had dialed it up too much that last time. That's fine. I'm just I'm just pointing these things out so that you. No, it's great. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm not taking it critically. I'm I'm learning. Okay. Yeah, the tip the tip of those flames is the hottest part of that of any flame of any uh, torch. Give me just a second. Yeah. I got to remind myself everything in there is still really hot. Yeah, I get the ta get that towel like almost soaking, wet, almost dripping wet. And then you can cool it down in like two seconds. Do what? I'm sorry? You get that towel almost dripping wet, almost dripping wet, soaked, and then you can cool it down really quick. Right afterwards. Yeah, yeah and, then, and then you don't have to worry about burning yourself. Kind of have it as soon as you get off there. Remember, the other one's hot too. Right. The one in front here. Right. That it came off of, so cool that one down too. It, it cools down quick with a cool, cold, wet wag. That shouldn't be hot. I, I, that's what I was checking, though. Yeah. So uh, that should I be agree. cool. Yeah. Well, I'm getting an idea. Some of these stems are harder to break. I mean, yeah, this is the one that. I, is the one. I always leave those on because it gives me something to hold on to when I pull the compressor out. Yeah, I'm not taking the whole thing off. I, I'm trying to get my screwdriver in there to break the uh, um, grounding wire. Oh, okay. It's either quarter, it's usually quarter inch nut driver. Oh, I thought it was a threaded. I think it's a. Phillips. Or Phillips. Yeah, it's Phillips. Just a bad lead. That's a UL thing. Is it really? Yeah, know. it's just it's it's um basically cabinet ground. It's not doesn't uh doesn't affect the operation. You don't even have to have it on there anymore. Affect it. Just you all likes the whole cabinet to be grounded. This is like one, I need one hand to put the pressure on the, yeah. on the, the <laughs> screw and the other to turn it. Yeah, it's tight to start with. So you get it loose in it, it's like the nuts. You know what? I'm just going to uh, pull the compressor out a little. 
right? I'm going to lift it off the post and bring it forward just a little. Yeah, it'll be resistive because that uh, other lines are still attached, the suction lines attached, so. Yep, I understand. This is open heart surgery. Right. It's kind of similar. Yeah. All these arteries and everything in there. <laughs> yeah. Return and out. out. Yeah. I don't want to go downstairs and get my stubby. Uh, there we go. What, do they have that on the back the back leg? Yeah. Uh, no, it's on the, the, the back of the front leg. Oh, okay. So, it's, it's always on the front. I don't understand. I don't know why they don't have it facing forward, though. He should have. There were other places they could probably put it. And it's just dirty. So you just cut that thing off. Now I'm sounding frustrated. <laughs> <laughs> just watch the suction line that you don't kink the suction line in the back when you pull it forward. Yeah. No, it's got a pretty spacious. Uh, It's not a real long screw, but it sometimes it's tight in there all the way out. It's kind of a pain. It really is. Yeah. It'll loosen up here in a second. Yeah, it's tapered, so I should start getting some relief. I'm making a little more progress now. Torturous. I know. I hate it when I when they're like that. I usually get them and they're all all the way out. They're tight. Those nuts, the same thing. Especially in the back, it's a nightmare when they're tight all the way out. And my uh, my hands were not arthritic this morning, but uh, after fishing through here yesterday with the vacuum cleaner and all that, I, you know, I could feel them. Are they get cramped? Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, all right, so cramped bad. Tuck this guy out of the way now. Over here. Okay, so as you're moving this compressor, you just got to watch both lines in the back and make right. sure that they're not pulling in a, any direction that they're going to actually kink. Sometimes you got to grab a hold of that suction line up top and kind of unroll it because it's it's curled. You kind of yeah. uncurling it as you're pulling the compressor out. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I almost have to, like, rotate the compressor out with it. Yeah, I, I would use one hand on the on that coil up top, too, uh, the suction line, just to – because right where you're, above your hand is where that suction line can actually kink as you're pulling this compressor out. So you kind of want to uncoil that coil at the same time you're moving the compressor. And, and it's just like a gentle curve. So you just kind of keep your hand on the top, too, so you don't kink it over there to the left. Okay, and we're thinking it rotates out this way? Yeah, yeah, just yeah. like you were moving it out. Because that's the way it's going to – that line is wrapped. And Otherwise, I'll, I'll, if, if that – that line should be wrapped that way where you uncurl it that way. Well, you see how it is? Uh, it's underneath it. Um, just a second. Yeah, I'll hold Okay, so it goes, hold still just one second here. It goes in from there, okay, and then 
Okay. So what you might have to do here is move this um, suction line to the right, but grab a hold in the back, the suction line in the back right there, and then grab the top front of the suction line and move it over to the right. Grab back in the back, back, back over here where the suction line, okay, let me, let me say this. The suction line comes out of the compressor, comes up and rotates around in front of the compressor here. And then it goes back down in the back. Yeah, so you're gonna bring that over to the right. Then you're gonna move the compressor out to the left and that's where it gets a little tricky. You just gotta make sure that this doesn't get kinked. It would, if they had coiled this differently, then you wouldn't have this problem. They weren't smart enough about coiling it because they expect you to take the top off. So just move it over to the right some, and the compressor is actually gonna rotate to the left now, gently. Yeah, there you go, see? You're gonna go the opposite direction we were talking about to start. So the compressor is gonna rotate to the left, uh, counterclockwise, and you're gonna pull that, push that suction line to the right. I can't hear you. Your, vol your mute's off. I have, I have no idea how that yeah, okay. Um, do I need to tuck this back in? No, just let it follow out by by itself. Wherever it goes is fine, just as long as it just follows. So, yeah, and then and then make sure that this, this uh, section line, I wouldn't pull out, don't pull out right now. Leave it right right there. Because as this uh, section line gets smaller in circumference, it's going to want to kink up front here. Yeah. Okay? Right. So... What you want to do is the same thing. You're going to want to push the, that up top, that suction line, push it to the right a little bit, and then bring this out, compressor straight out, basically, at this point, um, and just so, kind of get it a little bit farther out. So, so kind of stupid question, but, you know, I mean, what if I just used uh, my Dremel with the cutoff wheel to cut the stubs off the old thing here, which would be easy easy to do you know somewhere like right here and then I could have access to this and do it back there well you still have to put the lines on the new one so you have to still get the, the you still have to get this position properly you stalled your video stalled again Your video stalled again.